Meeting call to order. Roll call, please. Dallas Lane. Here. Eugene Davis. Here. Jimmy Carter. Here. Barry Cheney. Here. Frank Justice. Here. Sarah requests the documents from the regular commission meeting held on April the 23rd, 2012, is submitted and then authorized the mayor to sign and execute said minutes. So moved. Second the motion. Any question or comment? Not on favor of saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passed. Uh, on business from the floor, before we take any business that might come in, I want to recognize some young ladies so that we can get them on the road and give them need what they need to do. Uh, this is a proclamation reading and photo with the Pipeville Lady Panthers softball team. We passed this proclamation the other day. I re will reread it. We will not need to take a vote on it. Then we'll take our photo up. This is a proclamation recognition in honor of the Pipeville Lady Panthers softball team and coaching staff for winning the 2012 15th Regional All-A Championship. Whereas the 2012 Pipeville Lady Panthers softball team did compete in the 15th Regional All-A Championship Tournament. And whereas the 2012 Pipeville Lady Panther softball team, with outstanding team play, did win their first game to be by defeating South Floyd with a victory, with a 21-0 victory. In the second game, the team defeated McGoffin County 10-1. In the championship game, the team defeated Paintsville with a 7-3 win, becoming the 15th regional All-A champions. And whereas the 2012 Pipeville Lady Panther softball team's accomplishment not only brings honor and recognition to the team and its coaches, but also brings great honor and recognition to their school and to all citizens of the city of Pipeville, Kentucky. And whereas the 2012 Pipeville Lady Panthers softball team shall hence therefore be well known throughout the region as an accomplished winning program. But such an accomplishment is worthy of being honored and recognized by the Board of Commissioners of the city of Pipeville. Now therefore be it proclaimed by the city of Pipeville as follows that the 2012 Pipeville Lady Panther softball team, well, you're going to get me right off the bat. If I get do your names wrong, just tell me, okay? <laughs> is that Ayla? Ayla? Aaliyah. Aaliyah. Number four, Aaliyah Barley. Number 19, Sarah Byrie. Number nine, Molly Blackburn. Number 15, Megan Cochran. Number 27, Kennedy Coleman. Number six, Erica Kahn. Number 10, Morgan Curry. Number zero, Stacy Gooch. Number 44, Emily Hall. Number 24, Casey Huff. Number 12, number 12 Emily Hughes. Number 11, Lindsey Eisner. Number two, Tawny Justice. Number 17, Sarah Lucas. Number three, Heather Maynard. Number 36, Megan Maynard. Number 21, Amber Sexton and coaching staff, head coach, Matt Walls, assistant coaches, Misty Haynes and J.D. Hughes, and stats, Pat Paul, Jim Clay, are by <laughs> Pat Paul. That's what my grandson called me, and I missed that one. <laughs> are by these presents duly honored and recognized by the City of Pible for their outstanding performance in the championship tournament. That because of each player's outstanding performance of excellence in softball and as a citizen of Pikeville, they are hereby appointed and designated as special ambassadors of goodwill for the city of Pikeville. The outstanding accomplishments by this team and coaches set forth here and above shall be recorded among the records of the city of Pikeville by the clerk of the city so that others that come hereafter will know of their excellence in softball. This proclamation has been adopted by the city commission this 23rd day of April 2012. As I said, we've already passed this. The young ladies were able to make their presence here today. And we're honored to have you. And if y'all have any comments or the coaches want to comment, we'll do so before the photo. Female coaches. Do what? I'll let them make a comment. Well, I'd like to congratulate you all for being winners. And uh, I'll tell you what. We've got some of the prettiest ladies here in Pipeville. <laughs> but congratulations. Uh, job well done. Well, I'd, I'd just like to say as a graduate of Pikeville High School and a 
former teacher and coach down there. Uh, I know the commission, the entire commission, is proud of what you've accomplished. And P Pike was a special place. That don't mean that don't mean that we as individuals are better than anybody else. But uh, I came to Pikeville in 1947 as a 14 year old boy. Uh oh, I just told my age. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I told a group at the auditorium, as the whole student body was there, this is about four or five years ago, that when I came to Pikeville, I didn't want to come. I played ball, football, basketball, and baseball at Jenkins for my freshman, sophomore year. And uh, I didn't want to leave. But my dad, my mother, I talked to everybody in the family, but my dad, because I knew what he was going to say. So I saved him for last. All the others approved my mother and my sister that got married. <coughs> and then when I asked my dad, he said, Son, do you have anything under the floor? If you, it, None of you have ever lived in a coal camp, but you had a coal, a coal camp house and you had a, it was kind of high in the back and I had an old bicycle I'd put together. I'd, I'd made it from four or five other bicycles that wrecked, I guess. And had a couple of boys that I was real close to that, uh, students that we played ball together. And I told them, they said, you going, Gene, you still going, y'all going to move to Mac Roberts or to Pikeville? And I said, not that I know of. I think I was the last one to find out about it. So my dad came in on Friday from work. And I started asking, I said, Dad, can I? And he said, I know what you're going to say, son. I know what you're going to ask. <coughs> no, we're moving to Pikeville in the morning. I got on a telephone call with my sister. And I said, would you talk to Dad about, see if he'll let me stay with you? And she said, well, and it was all right. They found their husband. I was going to stay with them my last two years of high school because they did not want to move. And uh, But anyway, he told me I was going. And I pouted on him. I had, he put me in a truck with him. It was, we had a car, and he, he was driving a truck, moving truck or something. So he put me in there with him. So I pouted all the way to Pikeville to no avail. It didn't phase him one bit. Now, if he'd been a mean guy, he'd have said, you stop that pouting right now, and I want to wear you out. He didn't do that. He just let me pout and pout and pout. <coughs> and I'm glad he did. Because if he had caved in, I don't know. I'm satisfied with where I am in life now, so I know he made the right decision, but saying I couldn't stay Where's up. your maroon at? I've got mine on. <laughs> uh, it's in the washer. My, wash <laughs> my wife washed every one of them today. No, I've got... I've got a maroon shirt like that. Does it have a P on it? I'll tell you what, I didn't huh? Where's the P? Right there, buddy. P. <laughs> he just put it on there. I've got one of the P on. I save it more for special occasions around yeah. school. Let me speak to the young ladies. I'll tell you, the girl softball, uh, Mark's daughter was down there, Emily Colvin. I came down and I watched some softball games. And I really have to hand it off to you. Y'all can get with it now. I appreciate it. Seen a little hard play. Y'all got down to dirt. And it was a lot of fun to watch, to be honest with you. I wish I could get down there more often and see all these sports, but uh, it's truly an honor to have you all up tonight, and we're glad to honor you. And uh, Pikeville Panthers are a very special place. And I do think we are the best. So I am a little prejudiced. Is that right, Miss Paula? So thank you all for coming. Y'all need anything else? I, again, uh, thank y'all for coming today. And uh, I know y'all had a game, I think, last meeting or something. You couldn't couldn't make it, but uh, uh, we've we've been able to honor a lot this year, and it's and it's just one of those streaks. And I hope we can keep it going because uh, Pikeville has made a champions, and y'all proven that this year as well. So congratulations. Well, <clears throat> they start over on this side, and the time to get to me, I haven't done said it all. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Commissioner Davis tells this same story. We've heard it over and over. <laughs> he changes it a little bit, you know. I was 14 years old when I came to Pikeville. Well, I can't boast for that. I was 35 when I came to Pikeville, 
I'll be 80 May 26th, but I've been here a while. Uh, but anyway, I love Pikeville. I, I've lived in big cities. I was raised in Grundy, born in Pike County. But uh, I've never seen nothing like this Pikeville High School. They're tough, but they're hard to beat anywhere. And uh, so I'm real proud of them. And uh, anyway, we appreciate you. That's one. That's that's one time. <laughs> no. Okay. Anyway, it's good to have everybody here, and I'm I'm glad to be here with you. Thank you. Okay. What we're going to do is before we bring everybody up, we're going to go ahead and read another proclamation. It's a proclamation recognition in honor of Pavo Lady Panther Lindsay Eisner for being named the 2012 Female Academic Athlete of the Year. Whereas during a prestigious event held at the University of Louisville's Papa John's Cardinal Stadium on April 26, 2012, Papa High School's very own Lady Panther, Lindsay Eisner, was named as the 2012 Female Academic Athlete of the Year for the entire state of Kentucky by the Kentucky High School Athletic Directors Association. Whereas the award was based not only on a person's athletic ability, but also one's academic achievements and community service. And whereas Lindsay Eisner easily qualified as a superior athlete by being an outstanding golfer, winning regional her senior year, a remarkable basketball player by scoring 1,287 points during her career, and an unbelievable softball player currently batting 450 as the Lady Panthers shortstop. And whereas Lindsay's not only performed on the field of play as a star athlete, but also in the classroom as an outstanding student maintaining a 4.0 GPA with a very difficult schedule. Lindsay has also been extremely active with various organizations currently belong to seven different clubs. Now therefore be it proclaimed by the City of Powell as follows, that the 2012 Female Academic Athlete of the Year for the State of Kentucky, Lindsay Eisner, are by these presents duly honored and recognized by the City of Powell for outstanding performance and accomplishments, that because of her special recognition accomplishments and as a citizen of Pikeville, she is hereby appointed and designated as a community ambassador of goodwill for the city of Pikeville. Also in acknowledgement for her great undertakings, she shall receive a special plaque validating this prestigious honor and, is, and it's entitled to all privileges set forth for said position. It is further proclaimed by the city at the Pikeville City Commission that this award is hereby presented and shall be recorded by the Pikeville City Clerk among the records of the City of Pikeville, so that others that come hereafter will know of Lindsay Eisner's accomplishments and excellence and achievements. This proclamation can be adopted this 14th day of May, if you so choose. So moved. Second. We have a motion to second. Any questions or comments? I'd like to recognize Cindy Stewart, if you don't mind. I understand that you were her golf coach basketball coach and you could probably enlighten us better about this young lady than anybody. Yes, uh, yes ma'am. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we will redo the proclamation then. Do you think you more things you need to know? We did get all the young ladies' names on the proclamation, right? Um, when I wrote a letter for Lindsay, um, the statement how I closed my letter, I said that Lindsay Dawn Eisner is truly an exceptional young lady and represents the best that Pikeville High School and the Pikeville community has to offer. Her exemplary record of academic achievement, community service, and her long list of athletic accomp accomplishments reflect why I hope you will give her your fullest consideration for the 2012 Female Academic Athlete of the Year Award. You know, when a coach really gets to know a player, but when you spend eight or nine months a year in two sports with a player, you really, really get to know them. And uh, just a few things that, that I think are really uh, important that you need to know about Lindsay is, not only did she win the region this year in golf, she's the only girl in the history of Pikeville High School to ever do that. And uh, she also qualified during her four years of high school for eight state golf tournaments. Every year she qualified for the All-A and the KHSAA golf tournament. 
Um, she scored 12, 1,287 points in her career, and she's only one in the history of girls' basketball since the 70s. Uh, there are only 11 1,000-point scorers in the history of girls' basketball in Pikeville High School. That's also very significant. Um, I would like to also congratulate the softball, and I'm not sure that they would be here tonight. There's a lot of talented young ladies out there, but I know that Lindsay Eisner is a big, big part of the reason why they're here tonight also. Um, academically, she has a 32 on the ACT. She was a Kentucky Governor Scholar. She's accepted a Presidential Scholarship to the University of Kentucky. Um, as an athlete, she's always humble in victory, gracious in defeat, um, but make no mistake, she'll cut your throat in a basketball game or in a playoff <laughs> approaching the 18th hole. Um, uh, another thing is she's just a great example for young girls, uh, seventh graders, eighth graders. She's the type of girl that you would want your daughter to model herself after and she embodies all the characteristics that good coaches try to teach. So anyway, congratulations, Lindsay. So, uh, which you. one is Lindsay? <laughs> which one is she? That's, we uh, guessed that. Stand up. <laughs> Lindsay, when a coach gets up and stands and talks about you and as much love as she gave towards you, there's nothing else that we can really add. But number one thing is it's we're proud to have you as part of Pyro, Kentucky, okay? Absolutely. Any other questions or comments? If not, all in favor assume saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passed. Okay, Doc. Lindsay, we'd like to have you come up for the marriage presentation of plaque and a uh, gift of the start. And then once that uh, we get your photo, we'd like to invite the rest of the team up and uh, get a photo of the team. But what we'll be doing is on uh, Friday, once uh, Dustin gets the, the pictures developed, we'll get each one of the uh, team members a copy of the photo as well. the rest of the team and coaches up and Dusty will place you after we get your pictures you're welcome to stay but you're free to leave after this okay we don't need to leave after that do we Dusty, where do you want them? I'm guessing I'm going to be in the front. Here on the corner. See, here's in the front. Probably would. Molly, why don't you come down here? Molly, you slide back this way. Good, right there. Now that gives us some room. Over the gap. The gap. Coach. Oh. Second, Dusty, you got coach? There's, coach. Yeah, there's not enough room for those. Coach on the wing. I get up here and I get also, I'm sorry. What about that lady? Point to Tennessee. Oh, 
Sample as it is. Sounds like a machine gun, doesn't Penny, it? Penny, the parents would like to stand up. Feel free to do so. Get a better shot. Is it true that Chief Khan has a, a daughter in that group somewhere? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Great. Congratulations. Thank you. Under business from the floor, item number four, there's an announcement on the Expo Center that I'm going to bring uh, Steve St. John up in just a second. But before I do, just a couple of uh, comments I want to make. First of all, I want to uh, say thank you to the Commission on behalf of the community for uh, your involvement and uh, willingness uh, to step up and, and save the East Kentucky Expo Center. Um, from a financial uh, problem that it had. Uh, since doing so, the uh, Expo Center has uh, really thrived over the past several months. There's a lot of things that are, that are announced that you see that come over the, uh, the airways, things like Eric Church that, uh, again, tickets go on sale, they get, uh, they get uh, depicted in the newspaper, but there's a lot of events that goes on that are either private events or individual events that may not get that same uh, exposure. Um, but with that said, this is a quality of life issue. Um, because of the Expo Center being in the financial position that it's in, has been able to not only improve uh, the quality of life, but also to improve its position and, and improve the acts that have come along. This is a regional facility, um, and our usage is up, Steve can tell you. Our events are up. Um, and then on top of that, you see a lot of events, uh, I'm going to talk about quality of life, that create um, memories for our youth. Uh, with that, we've had Disney on Ice, Ringling Brothers, and Barnum and Bailey, several concerts. But above that, some of the things that are forgotten about, and I've noticed, I actually sent Steve an email uh, yesterday before church, uh, because living beside the park, I noticed, Mayor, that there is a, a lot of traffic, or has been for the past several weeks, assuming that it was proms, um, obviously because they're all dressed up in their nice uh, formal wear. But uh, I asked Steve, uh, this being a regional facility, and who all is utilizing this facility. And what's interesting to know is that his, his response back yesterday was, is the proms that have been held there this year has been Pike Central, Shelby Valley, Belfry, and East Ridge. So this facility is being utilized on a regional basis. Again, it creates these memories. It creates opportunities uh, because there's a lot of things in these small gymnasiums or these uh, uh, lunch rooms and, and things that are traditionally used for these proms that uh, doesn't have the workability that the Expo Center does. Uh, the other thing that is sometimes forgotten is the sporting events that this facility has. The Expo was recently ranked third in sports tourism by the Kentucky uh, Monthly Magazine. Um, and what they host is not only what we're getting ready to talk about here in a moment, but also U Pike uh, Boys and Girls Basketball pro Program, and it also are the home uh, of the drillers. And of course, we couldn't leave out the regional 15th uh, uh, tournament where we have a, a special announcement tonight. I'm going to turn it over to Steve and let him come up and, and make this announcement. Steve? Thanks a lot, Donovan, uh, Mayor, Commissioners. Um, I was going to come up and read the press release that we have re uh, prepared for tomorrow, but uh, one, one of the things that um, that kind of transitions nicely between recognizing some of our outstanding athletes and then uh, transitioning into this press release that we have for the facility are, are the non-ticketed events that, that Donovan just mentioned. The, uh, the month of May, we have two ticketed events in the facility, so if you were a ticket purchaser that went online and looked at our website, you'd see two events this month. But uh, the reality of it is, is we have 22 events happening in the 20 in the 31 days of this month, and that was uh, three of them going on simultaneously. Saturday, you had Muscle on Main with Jesse out out in the streets. We had a, a wedding reception in the ballroom, 
and we had a prom in the arena. So we're truly multitasking over there and the facility is being used and I appreciate your support. In that, um, the press release that we have to go out for tomorrow has many key points in it and in those we have a uh, contract extension with the 15th Region Policy Board. Uh, that tournament will be hosted on the hardwood of the Expo Center until 2017 and hopefully beyond that. But that's, that, that's, our, that's our big news. So we have a, a multi-year contract with them uh, you know, using this facility that was put together um, using coal severance money uh, through the hard work of all the, the, the miners and the people in the mining industry in this area and all of you that, that work diligently to get those funds used back in this community. Um, some of the points Donovan made on that were it, it's a transition from our sporting that we recognized earlier into the, the tourism element. These people, they come in from 16 different schools in the region and, 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 and spend their money here and we actually turn around and send that money back out to them that's generated off of this tournament. Uh, the, the, the majority of the monies that, that are raised from that are sent back out to the schools. They're pretty much sent out in an equal stipend to all 16 high schools. Uh, the ones that participate get a little bit more for participating. They get meal money, um, they get mileage, things like that. So, you know, these are all things that, um, that are helping uh, to um, create that experience. Uh, the mayor put in a statement in there that uh, this provides those athletes with that opportunity to play on the same size floor that they would ne at the next step if they get to Rupp and deal with the size of crowd and the enthusiasm that they can't get from the high school. And um, you know, my, my, my take on it all is it's been great working with the schools. Um, they've, they've done a fantastic job of helping me to host it, uh, taking care of the administrative end of it. Um, we deal with, with all four districts. So, um, you know, it, uh, we rotate on an annual, base, annual basis with each district. So I get a chance to meet all these people from the area and they've all been fantastic to work with. And um, it, it, it's, a, it's a great service that we provide as the Expo Center and the city of Pikeville to showcase these athletes some of them that are going on to Division I colleges. Steve, that's great news. I always enjoy the 15th region tournament here. Yep. It's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's highly anticipated every year. And uh, I mean, it's got a good atmosphere to it. You have all the schools in that gym. It's also a favorite time of year for the proms. And I see our young people in the county utilizes what is theirs. That's their expo center. You know, we're paying that with coal severance dollars, we're paying that with restaurant tax, and that is their facility. They're coming over and using the park, and they're in a, a nice, secure area with police protection and fire protection and ambulance service, and it just tickles me to death to see them enjoying themselves and being at their expo center. Thank you. Still working on the 15th and 14th challenge for you, man. I'd like to have a regional challenge. Would you think it'd be pretty cool, Dustin? Yeah. All stars, you mean? I tell you, it's hard, it's hard to do, but yeah. you gotta get a lot of. You know, we've got 16 teams that got to agree to it, and then you take a whole nother in a whole nother region. I, I've, I've been having some good conversations, though. Uh, hopefully, we can get something like that started. It'd be a lot of fun. Yep, absolutely. All stars. Thanks, okay, Steve. Thank you. Mayor, on that same note, just uh, two quick things that I want to point out is one, and Steve mentioned a little bit of it, is that the anticipated crowd for this uh, event is around 25,000 people. And I know you talk about all the things that the uh, uh, that benefits our, our youth in this area, but I, I, one thing in, in the press release going out, but, I, but uh, just for the sake of putting this out there, I, w I would like to read this. This was a comment that was made as part of the, uh, the press release. It says, the greatest portion of these funds that are given back to the schools immediately following the tournament, being able to give back to, is a key element in supporting our youth and continued athlete, athletes. Uh, Pikeville Mayor Frank Justice states, not only does this event benefit our schools financially by having a larger venue to play in, but more importantly, it gives back to our kids with a great experience. Playing in a venue that can host over 5,000 screaming spectators on a floor size that is equal to RUP is a first-class experience 
will give these youth students, young students, athletes, a memory that will last a lifetime, and that's what it's all about. And I know Steve alluded to that fact, but I know from the commission standpoint that preserving the Expo Center, uh, I couldn't have said it better. So uh, great job. We're excited that uh, we're hosting this great event, and it will also have, obviously, a tremendous economic uh, advantage to our community. <clears throat> Next item I have, I'm extremely, uh, <coughs> excuse me, extremely excited uh, to bring up. Before that I get into the tourism piece, uh, there was some recent press. I wanted to share something with the commission. This is a, a study that was done by the economic, there's an economic impact study done by the travelers and tourism industry through the state of Kentucky. This is from 2010-2011. It states that um, a detailed examination of expenditures and employee taxes generated by the Kentucky tourism and travel industry as well as the industry structure has been conducted by the Kentucky Tourism Cabinet. The tourism and travel industry uh, contributed nearly $11.7 billion to Kentucky's economy in 2011. Direct expenditures by tourism uh, accounts for $7.4 billion totally. Uh, the 2011 tourism industry generated $1.224 billion in tax revenues for governments, and it generated $1.18 billion in tax revenue in 2010. It also created uh, 169,932 jobs in the state of Kentucky for last year. Uh, with that said, in looking at tourism, uh, Pike County, and I didn't list all the counties, uh, but Pike County is listed 20th out of, out of the 120 counties in the state of Kentucky. Uh, Pike County alone generates $92,880,650 uh, in tourism revenue alone just in Pike County. I bring all this up because, again, I, uh, I wanted not only to present a couple of awards today to the commission, but also wanted to talk just briefly about tourism. As the commission knows, as the, uh, the chairman of the uh, tourism, Pikeville Tourism Commission, on January, I'm sorry, on July the 11th of 2011, this commission adopted a, a uh, cultural district uh, for downtown Pikeville. Um, in understanding what the need for improving the overall quality of life and not only a cultural district but looking at tourism as a whole and taking our natural resources and utilizing them in such a fashion that not only creates job but also creates uh, quality of life. The resolution that was adopted on May 31st, 2011 created the first Pikeville City Tourism Commission and of course Jesse Bowling who's here tonight was appointed as the director for that uh, commission. The following board members were also appointed. We had Frank Bailey, who is an owner of a hotel, Sean Cochran, who is, is a city employee, Jim Hobbs, a local banker, Drew Justice, who is a local restaurant uh, uh, owner, Romaine Keith, and uh, Sam Keith, who operates a local hotel, and then myself. Uh, over the past, and, and I bring up the May 31st date because I'm just uh, understanding from this commission's perspective that in less than one year's time, what you see around the wall here is what has, uh, has occurred within our great community. When you look around the room, you see the items like whitewater trails, paddle boats, paintball, motorcycle trails, Main Street Live, the Artisan Center events, horse trails, Muscle on Main, participation with Hillbilly Days, numerous camps and specific events, movie night in the park, Nightmare on Main, Bob Amos upgrades in the RV park, the Special Needs Park, and a whole lot more that I'm leaving off. I, uh, again, <clears throat> you know, taking this job back in 2004, I remember very well the interview that the, the commission put forth and asking and telling me what this commission wanted to see in this community going forward. And I commend you, gentlemen, because you've done an absolutely outstanding job at recognizing not only the potential of our community, but pushing those of us that are out there representing you to ensure that we get where you want to be. And I don't think anywhere across the state of Kentucky has more been done in one community in tourism in such a short period of time. Now with that said, I just mentioned uh, the Kentucky Department of Tourism. There was a submittal that was done and the Kentucky Department of, of Travel and Tourism uh, created a, an event um, across the state called There's Only One. We submitted the Pikeville Cut Through Project as a potential candidate for this and what the intent of this was was to go around the state and to recognize very specific tourism attractions that there's nowhere else, not only in the state of Kentucky, but also in the nation. And I'm proud to announce tonight that out of the 10, <coughs> excuse me, that out of the 10 um, that were uh, um, announced 
by the uh, Kentucky Department of Tourism that the pipe will cut through project was selected as there's only one throughout the state of Kentucky, uh, which is a great honor and a great privilege. It's not just from the standpoint of the engineering and what originally created through the cut-through project, but it was also all the many um, additions that have happened over the past several years. Things like the RV park, the river trails, the, the five and a half mile walk trail, the free picnic shelters, the soccer field, and I could go on and on, a half a million dollar sidewalk. Um, there's numerous things that have enhanced the quality of life for the citizens of Pikeville through, again, your great vision and your hard work. With that, <clears throat> I appoint to my left This is a banner that will now be flown through the state of Kentucky with the other nine that were selected through numerous publications and magazine listing the Pikeville Cut Through Project as there's only one in Kentucky. So congratulations. The next item that I'll bring up. Whoa, 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 Don. That's well, it's a, well, go right ahead. Go right ahead, Mayor. It, uh, Slow me down slow you down a little bit. Jesse and Donovan and I guess there's a couple of commissioners that's been responsible for Muscle on Main. You all have done a tremendous job and uh, you've utilized what uh, our forefathers did for us on the cut through. Our business people have utilized the areas. We've built houses on it and as Donovan pointed out you all have taken areas of Bob Davis Park and greatly influenced the quality of life of people in the region and I just want to say thank you for that. That took a lot of vision and hard work and the people over here doing the grant work, Melanie, and I know it's, you know, hard to get that money to do these projects but you all stay in there. We had the, uh, what is it, the Shriners in July or something. Early Christmas in July. Doing the uh, handicap park. At Bob Amos there's just a lot of individuals putting forth effort to make this happen and it's truly been a great part of our lives and uh, I wanted to thank you. Sorry about that. Next, Mayor, on, along that, those same lines, you mentioned the uh, Muscle on Main event. All the events that I just attributed to the Tourism Commission, this hardworking commission, and this body and your vision, the uh, Muscle on Main <coughs> event is, is definitely no exception. Mayor, I remember back uh, around 2004, 2005, when you asked me to go and meet with a group uh, at the, at the uh, windmill. And that was my first introduction with the Good Old Boys Car Club, a bunch of great guys. And uh, from that, obviously, uh, Commissioner Cheney and, and uh, Commissioner Carter with Feral Gas as, as a uh, major corporate sponsor of this event really got enthused as well as the rest of the commission uh, to create uh, this event for, for our community. Over the past several years, uh, with, at the direction of, uh, of Jesse, uh, this event has continued to grow um, and has a lot of good wings right now is the way that I would put it because we have a lot that is in the uh, pipeline not only for this year but in the years to come. With that said, <clears throat> I, uh, the uh, Kentucky travel industry, uh, they have a ranking of the 2012 top 10 festivals and events for the state of Kentucky. And again, I'm proud to announce tonight that the Muscle on Main project is now listed I present this plaque uh, on behalf of the Kentucky um, uh, Tourism, uh, I'm sorry, the Kentucky Travel Industry Association, present this plaque on their behalf to the Pikeville City Commission in recognition of uh, Muscle on Main being one of the top 10 best festivals or events for the state of Kentucky this year. I'd also present a uh, citation on behalf of uh, Leslie Combs and Senator Jones, Representative Combs and Jones, uh, Senator Jones and Representative Combs, I'll get it right, uh, who have issued the city two citations in recognition uh, for these two prestigious awards for Muscle on Main, and then also there's only one with the cut through project. Uh, both uh, Senator Jones and Representative Combs and Representative Hall 
a big major proponents uh, for not only Pikeville but for all of Eastern Kentucky. And without their help, a lot of this uh, would not have been possible. So again, I commend the uh, Jesse and, and uh, the uh, Tourism Commission, the P new Pikeville Tourism Commission that was re created just a year ago, and uh, commend uh, this commission again for their vision and hard work to allow us to do the jobs that you've appointed us uh, to do. Lastly, I would also, and I won't read through it, but um, we also have another announcement that um, there is an award uh, that's given throughout the whole United States. Um, and basically out of this, I think there was 41 states uh, that was looked at throughout the state. Last year, the city of Pikeville was recognized as a playful city USA uh, community. If you look at the uh, entry signs into the city limits of Pikeville, you'll see the nice little play signs. Uh, I'm proud to announce again in 2012 uh, the press release will go out tomorrow that uh, the city of Pikeville was once again uh, awarded and nominate, well, nominated and awarded as a playful city USA community. So congratulations. Um, I got one other presentation and I'm finished. Is there any, anything you want to say before that? I, I know there's a lot of awards, a lot of, uh, a lot of notoriety towards all these projects, but I'll turn it over to you, Mayor, if there's anything else you'd like to say. I'll just pretty well wrapped it up the first time Dom and y'all doing a great job and you taking what we've asked you to do you had your own visions and Melanie over here with her grant writing and Jesse with his tourism it's just a great combination we got the fire department police departments here participating during the hillbilly days and all these events and uh, I'm really satisfied with what's going on yeah I mean I, I I know this stuff just doesn't happen. <laughs> Trust me, it right. just doesn't happen. And uh, a lot of hard work and a lot of blood, sweat, and tears go through all this with uh, with uh, everybody at the city. And I think everybody pitches in and does what needs to be done to make it happen. So, uh, I mean, just hats off to everybody that has a hand in this. And that's just about everybody. I'm, I mean, I'm honest, everybody has a hand in it. Uh, and it's just amazing in what a year or two has done and where we've gotten already. So, great job. I would also recognize, uh, Jimmy, I, I mentioned Furl Gas, but uh, we've got City Tire and uh, Jesse, whom we're leaving out, other than the good old boys, is that? Uh, oh. uh, that are, are getting great sponsors without our corporate sponsors, and, and uh, we wouldn't be able to do what we've done. And if you read through the press release that, will, uh, that has come out, uh, it's not just about the event and the, and the burnout. It's also about the block parties and bringing people out. And it's also about having some uh, well-known figures in the racing industry uh, visiting our community. Uh, because we bring people, this event brings people from all over, uh, not just Kentucky, but all over the region to showcase these cars. So uh, we're, we're very satisfied and very happy with, uh, with our accomplishment. I've got one thing to say to Commissioner Cheney, though. Of all this great stuff that you're all putting together, we're not going to race cars down Main Street. <laughs> <laughs> He's wanting to drag them down Main Street. Mary, he did ask that. He <laughs> wanted to know where I could get the green flags. Uh, <clears throat> the last thing before we get back into the agenda, the, uh, during the uh, work session today, there was a presentation uh, based upon historical venues. And I mentioned uh, during that presentation, you can't get to where you, you're going unless you know where you came from. <clears throat> so one other presentation that, that I'd like to present um, over here, and this is something that will hang in our uh, commission room here, is a plaque. Whoops, I got somebody to sign their code up. Listing from 1904 forwards to all of our honorable mayors. Um, of course, the Mayor Frank Justice is currently open since serving from 2003, and I would add Mayor is our second longest serving mayor uh, with the city. So uh, congratulations. This will be proudly hung, and uh, as you can see, there's some blanks for the future. Uh, so congratulations. We wanted to present that uh, to the, you the city. Taking, pretending there. That is our conclusion, believe it or not, from business from the floor. A lot of stuff going on.